And what I wanted to do was I wanted to honestly engage with my own practice in script writing classes in first and second year. Uh, the work that the students do is entirely confined to the page. Now, obviously, there's very good practical reasons for that. It would be impossible to have every student making a film um, out of every script they write. And it's also very, very important to realise that they have a great deal to learn, not only in the more practical areas, but in my areas as well um, of, of screenwriting, before we send them out making films. But nonetheless, after several years of seeing how they respond to this regime of being confined to the page in my module, I started to ask myself two things. Is this way of learning reminding them too much of writing and school and academic sort of work? And if so, is that hindering their creative freedom? Um, and wouldn't it be a good thing if the process about learning for writing for screen had some sort of visual component right from the beginning? in order to help me plan how I might do this. I decided to look at the theory of experiential learning. Now this theory emphasises learning by doing, and so it seemed the one most likely to be of help to me. Jennifer Moon, who was one of my tutors at Bournemouth, and somebody whose work I really admire, <coughs> and has written a lot about learning and development, now she offered very interesting examples to differentiate um, from experiential learning and what she calls mediated. Now, her example of experiential learning is an interested adult visits a museum to view, handle, and read from an ancient text. And her um, example of mediated learning, the student attends a class in which there is a presentation about the text with the teacher quoting from an ancient copy of it. While these two examples aren't perfectly analogous to a screenwriting module, and what's clear to me is that my present practice is closer to mediated learning. Um, and my instinct is that the experiential um, learning <coughs> example would be better for my students. So I moved on and I looked at this. Now what's this? This is David Cohn's four-stage cyclical theory on experiential learning. Looking at the first stage, he gives us concrete experience. Moving on to the second, observation and reflection. The third, forming abstract concepts, and four, testing in new situations. Looking at these four stages and translating them into the business of learning script writing, then the concrete experience may be seen as the act of writing a scene or creating a character. However, if all the students does is write the scene down on paper, which is what happens at present, then the second stage, observation and reflection, cannot really happen because the student hasn't truly experienced anything. Instead, the student receives comment and feedback um, from me and analysis, which he or she may take on board depending on their receptivity. But the cycle breaks down because the true experiential element is missing. However, if a way can be found for the student to begin the process of developing a script idea uh, via some genuine concrete experience, then he or she would have something to observe and reflect on, uh, which will in turn will allow the formation of abstract concepts which hopefully will inform their next script assignment. So then, an important question then becomes, if one wants to use Cope's four-stage cycle, what kind of initial script assignment will constitute a useful concrete experience? And can I find for my students uh, a useful example of Jennifer Moon's interested adult examining the manuscript at the museum? I've come up with this idea that I want them to keep a writer's notebook. Now, this is no longer a notebook in the old traditional sense. It is, it's a writer's notebook in the form of a blog. Fair enough. Not very many sort of mad rules there. But I want this to be specifically for their screenwriting module. And I want to assign them specific tasks that will have a visual component and a story component. Now, what do I mean by that? One example of this kind of work I want to do is this idea of place. Um, I'll ask them to think about a place they really like. I want them to photograph that place the camera phones, they can even film it with their phones as well if they like. But I want to see it visually. Then, in their post, I want them to talk about why they like the place, why it's important to them. But I'll ask them, also ask them to consider what sort of scene or story might happen in such a place. They'll consider what it actually means to them because of their own uh, memories and their experience and what it actually looks like to someone else who just sees an image of it. The student will already have started the process of seeing potential of telling stories in what is already familiar to them. Um, interestingly enough, Eddie Devlin? Yep. 
Remember when we were talking about Nigeria today? True. We talked about Black Rock. Okay. You want to shoot your film there. Why? Because you're making a film with Alvaro. Alvaro. Yeah. And you said, you see, Alvaro's just come here on his Erasmus, and he went to Black Rock, and he saw it differently. As to, you know how you would see it, um, because you knew it, and now because of how he's seen it, as a potential for telling a story, you're looking at it differently. So I was really enjoying to hear that today. Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> now there'll be a series um, of these exercises, and students will be encouraged to view each other's blogs and comment on them, offering their own thoughts on the visual images and the stories they might tell. Now what I want them to do then is, I want them to create a character. And I want them to write a fictional character, or to write uh, using social media. That is, that the character has a Twitter account, say, and a blog. I want them to cast an actor to play this character, and I want them to film him or her in their own world. We could consider, if we're talking about this further down the line, maybe looking at students from the performance studies uh, course here at UKIT and setting that up. Um, the plan is the character will tweet and blog and make video diaries and using whatever is available to them. Just a phone would be what I would think would be the best thing. Through this, this is what I see the student is learning. Character development. Excuse me, how the character interacts and behaves. Dialogue, how the character speaks. Story, beginning to consider what sort of story this character might be part of. Is there drama, interest, and potential for further development with this character in script form? Um, now, as the exercise is inspired by Cole's four-stage cyclical theory of learning, the students will be asked to write a short character biography. Now, you're all familiar with doing that, right? Um, now that's their starting point. But the concrete experience will then be the process of casting an actor, uh, working with him or her in the role, shooting simple video diaries, and writing blogs and tweets of the character. The difference between the student's initial notion of the character on paper and the reality of the finished exercise should form the basis for their observation and reflection. Now, because this new way of working is experientially new, um, I thought it would be useful to create a template for myself to see exactly if the theory worked. And if we did go on and develop this on the course, then I'd already have something in place which would be a template for what I might be asking them to do. So I created this character called Cam Sliney, and there it is. He's on Twitter, and he's a blog, and some videos on YouTube as well. Um, now, it's very important to remember, the specific character and story here is of no importance whatsoever, other than as an, an illustration to the students, how they might set about uh, developing their own idea. I wrote a scene of this character on his own, having a night in, and he's filming himself. That was all. We went to the location, and what we did was we worked on it while we were there. So we developed the scene, and what I'd like to do now, if you'll bear with me, can I just show you a couple of those? Uh, Callum Slimey here, here in Shea Slimey, my parents are in my house. Oh, uh, I'm actually minus for time because I'm going to Paris. Having been through all this myself, I'm pretty sure that any of my second year students could do this. Um, and from my point of view, I'm convinced that they would have a better sense of what they were trying to create if, if they were able to view material like this. Um, and if I were able to view it, I too would have a better sense of what they were trying to create. And they would have the concrete experience of being with the character in the place where the character comes from. So, this whole kind of testing new situations, which is Cole's part, uh, fourth part of the cycle, would mean that the student's deeper understanding of the character, who started life as a paragraph on a page, will now result in a better written screenplay. And one thing is certain, that the student um, will have had an experience closer to that of Jennifer Moon's interested adult examining the manuscript of the museum. So instead of sitting in a class, taking notes on what's good and bad about their written work, they will have uh, written something, cast an actor, found locations, and shot mini scenes using whatever um, they have on them, the phone. Um, and I think uh, writing and working uh, this way will help the writing of the work develop organically along the way. So 
if you think what I've presented here today is something that you would like to have had explored yourselves when studying in first and second year with me, very te technologically orientated, this is a little pom pom here. <laughs> if you don't, you walk out the door, you don't have to place the glass at all. Okay? So, thanks very much.